What's up, Fear Seekers? We're back with another episode of Industry Insiders, only this time we're doing things a little bit differently. But before we jump into what we're doing, first let's introduce John Aiken, brewer at Old Planters Brewing Company in Beverly, Massachusetts. John, thank you for taking the time to join us and chat with us tonight. Sure, yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. So what we're doing tonight, and we've actually done this only once before on Industry Insiders, we are actually going to be doing a little bit of tasting. Uh, so we have four of your brand new beers that we've got, and we're going to sample them together. And we want to just dive in with you to just chat about the beers, like go in in depth a little bit into what goes into making them, what the tasting notes are like, and then uh, we'll just kind of review it and just chat with you about it. If that's great with you. Cool. Yes, yeah, sounds great. Awesome. That's perfect. So what we're going to do is we want to start with a really great one that you guys have uh, that just came out and it's a collaboration beer with Wandering Soul, um, also up out of Beverly, Massachusetts. It is Old Soul New England IPA and we were just chatting off the air uh, or off the recording about this one with the new hop Nectaron and so we want to dive in a little bit about what goes into making this, like how did you guys start with the collaboration with Matt at Wandering Soul and yeah we'll just we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, yeah so I've worked with Matt um, before um, even before I worked at Old Planners um, so I've known him for you know five six years now and uh, we I think our first collaboration we ever did was actually with Wandering Soul we did a uh, uh, orange creamsicle uh, beer over the summer right. that came out pretty good um, so we have a lot of contact with him and I was kind of shoot the shit, and one day I was like, hey, want to do another collaboration? Uh, we said, yeah. Um, we were thinking of a style to do, and like I was telling you, IPAs are just kind of like the most common, yeah. easily marketable beer to kind of do a collaboration with. Um, easy base, uh, base malt. Um, and we were kind of thinking, uh, thinking in terms of hops. Uh, we were thinking at first, Matt threw out the idea of trying – a uh, hop blend called Trident. And we were all for that, uh, planning on doing that for a while. And then all of a sudden he came to us and said, there's a hop he saw on Lupulin that's been getting a lot of good feedback and he's really wanted to try it. And that was uh, Nectaron. So we came up with the idea of doing a single hop uh, IPA around 6% alcohol uh, with Nectaron. Um, so we kind of did our old planner style uh, for the IPA. Uh, we use no bittering hops. We do all whirlpool and dry hop addition. Um, kind of really helps the hops kind of come through uh, overall flavor. Um, and yeah, we uh, got the hop, opened up the bag, and instantly we we're just like, yeah, man, this is going to be freaking awesome beer. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I think it came out really good. Um, definitely tropical. Uh, dank, definitely your new age type of hop. Kind of reminds me of, you know, your mosaics and stuff like that. Not too dank. I think mosaic kind of has like an arm pity kind of smell to it sometimes. <laughs> I don't get any of that with this though. I just get tropical dankness, little mango, maybe passion fruit, um, something like that. So yeah, yeah, clean malt bill, Vienna malt, two row. Uh, that's pretty much it. A little bit of acid malt, I believe. And uh, yeah, all hops. I mean, so what, what's it like going in, like Nectaron being one that you hadn't used before? I mean, did you have an idea of what you wanted to do with it? Or did you really have to like get the thing and like assess it before you knew what the heck to do next? <laughs> um, we kind of knew our uh, method kind of going into it, what we were going to do. But it yeah. is definitely, it's a little bit, a little bit edgy sometimes when you're trying a new hop because they're trying to sell you the hops, obviously. So it, They'll make every hop sound freaking awesome. So you'll <laughs> yeah, like your descriptions online. They're like, oh, strawberry and passion fruit and mango. Then you get the hop and it's like, this just doesn't smell like any of those. It's just right. smells, like, <laughs> smells like a German hop. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. So sometimes when I see, sometimes when I see like the tasting notes and aromas and stuff, sorry to cut you off, but I feel like oh, they say, they just throw out all the buzzwords to get people all fired oh, up. I know. I taste yeah, it and I'm like, I mean, I guess, I don't know. This one, this one had all of the, all the things you mentioned that were in there. It was very, very flavorful, uh, this, yeah. this brew. Yeah, we've definitely gone hops before and have yeah, been super, not pissed off, but like, oh, like, what the <laughs> hell? Yeah, we've been sitting on a bunch of uh, 
Callista and Ariana that we bought uh, about a year ago. We just don't want to use it in anything. So it's been sitting in our hop cooler for like a year or two now. Jeez. But yeah, it's sitting there for. <laughs> yeah, it's probably sitting in the dumpster pretty soon, to be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, we got the Nectron and we used that whole box up for this one brew. So definitely a good hop. Definitely very happy with it. Is this something you guys think that you might revisit? Um, you'll brew it again for a second time? Like, do you see it? I mean, it's so far, it seems like it's been pretty well received. Instantly when we tried it, we were like, oh, man, we're going to have to brew this again. So, yeah. well, we'll see what Matt Smith wants to do um, in Wandering Soul, what they want to do. But I like, the, I like the beer so much, I would definitely brew it again. It is, awesome. it's, it's delicious. It's by far, I think, it, I could easily say, I think that this is one of my top beers that I've had in 2020. So, Thank you. It's, it is, it's fantastic. I nerd out. I told you before, I nerd out over, like, the new hop and the introduction of stuff like that. And just like trying new things, you know, and speaking of the collaboration with Matt at Wandering Soul, you know, how is it um, like working with somebody local uh, for you guys? I mean, do you, do you guys like cherish and, and try and run with these local collaborations as much as you possibly can? Um, yeah, we try to. Um, right now we have uh, three other breweries within, you know, a mile of our brewery yeah. uh, you know, in Beverly right now. So we try to do collaborations. Uh, uh, Paul Gentile at Gentile Brewing Company. Uh, the guys at, uh, us and the guys at uh, Channel Marker are going to be doing a collaboration uh, next month, I believe. Okay, uh, I nice. believe that's going to be like a West Coast, um, New England IPA type of hybrid type of thing. So, oh, that's cool. Like, like USO5 Chico uh, yeast, and then just load it up with hops. Well, definitely... Nice do a good amount of bittering hops for that beer, I assume, but trying to go after something along the lines of like a Pliny, the uh, Pliny kind of kind of style, which is kind of a tall order to try to make a beer like Pliny, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how Pretty it comes out. Too. Yeah, so yeah, we have, we've got five breweries in, uh, based out of Beverly right now, so it's pretty awesome. And uh, last year, we actually did a uh, beer mile event where we did a, Handed out uh, like stamp cards and stuff for people. And if you went to all four breweries in Beverly that day, you got a free T-shirt. And it was it was great. We had food options, different food vendors at all all the breweries. People were it was nuts. It was slammed. So I, I think we've made the rounds before voluntarily. So if you guys uh, ever do a yeah. contest of some sort, like yeah. again, we'll be there. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. over, we're hoping to get back to that eventually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, two, the two of us just live right across uh, the river in Salem. So, you know, it's well, easy nice. for us to hop on over to Beverly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've done it a few times already. So that's yeah, a, yeah. I love the idea. So you mentioned something I thought was interesting that seems like it's something you guys, you know, it's kind of the, just the way you do things. You mentioned not putting in bittering hops. Um, kind of that's the way that you looked at starting the, the project with this beer, but like it's almost uh, kind of built into your process. Is that, you know, how, is that, no, I, I assume that's not what every brewery does. And what's the reasoning for that? Um, so we only really do with our New England style IPAs. So we have the Spruce Willis tonight also. Um, we yeah. do bittering hops in that. Um, oh, gotcha, gotcha. You know, you kind of New England style, you kind of go low bitterness, but all the way for hop flavor type of thing. So, we won't use bittering hops, but we'll use probably more hops in a New England IPA than we would in any other beer. Gotcha. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, you guys, you know, you do typically brew. I know you've got at least, uh, off the top of my head, two other IPAs that are leaning towards that New England base. Um, I mean, I believe the, the Rhino Tears and the Fat Tuna, you know, those are mm -hmm. two of your staples. Um you know, is that, so when you, when you go into a collaboration, you think like, we're going to brew a new beer and, you know, you lean towards the New England style IPA, you were saying earlier, that's kind of like, Ooh, it's me. a popular, it's a popular <laughs> uh, brew and something that you guys like generally go for. I mean, is that, is that the thought process a little bit? Uh, so when we do collaborations, you definitely try to be um, receptive to other people's kind of styles. So we'll throw out our ideas and our methods out there, but you know, collaboration, you definitely want to be, you know, collaborating, obviously. Right. So yeah. you try to kind of get uh, the uh, 
styles of each brewery in there. So uh, the Nectaron, or the Old Soul, um, we did our kind of hopping method, but uh, we use kind of uh, Wandering Souls uh, malt fill, what they would normally do for that. So we did a gotcha. Vienna malt uh, two row. And I think that's about it for flaked oats, obviously, and wheat malt. Flaked oats and wheat malt are definitely another one of those kind of put in every New England style uh, beer. Kind of give it that mouthfeel, right? That softer mouthfeel, yeah. Yeah. Mouthfeel, yeah. That's really neat. And it's really cool to think about when you do a collaboration, you know, what sort of base or just in general, what styles are they doing that they kind of want to keep? And what styles are you doing that you kind of want to keep and just like uh, make it sort of like a tradition kind of thing. So that's neat. That's a really cool, um, you know, little thing that we, we didn't really know before. So I love that. Um, yeah. yeah. So anyone who's able to pick up, uh, pick up old soul New England IPA from uh, uh, old planters and wandering soul, the collaboration, it's so good. Definitely get a, a definitely get it if you can. Um, is it going to be sold out of the tap room? Are you guys distributing it? What's, what's going on with it? Um, it's definitely staying pretty local, uh, like most of our beers, um, but we are selling most of our um, share of it out of the tap room, and it is selling pretty fast. So, if you can find it, definitely buy it soon because it's flying off. I can see why it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so we'll move on, and because it's the holidays, and you already mentioned it, we are going to go to the Spruce Willis Spruce Tip IPA. That's the next one. Got it cracked right here. Uh, I had not tasted it before, and uh, I'm sipping it right now. I also love this one, and this is different from your typical IPA. You know, you guys kind of go for that piney. I mean, some most some IPAs like go for that style, the pioneer uh, flavor, and you really play into that with this one. You know, what's the what what went into brewing this one? Um, so I've been playing around with spruce tips for a couple of years now, um, and I freaking love them. They're awesome. They're not people think kind of. You get a spruce tip, it would kind of just taste like a Christmas tree uh, type of thing. But they're really fruity, flavorful. They have this like berry kind of note to them. So they're really, really nice. So uh, I started playing around with those two years ago. And it's kind of taken a while to kind of get the overall um, balance uh, to get them to come through with the hops. You know, they kind of work with the hops, but they definitely have their own kind of flavor now um, to them. And what we do is we make a tea out of the spruce and then we put that in our uh, secondary fermenter and uh, transfer the Interesting. primary to secondary. Okay. Yeah, I, I love, uh, and I don't have this one actually, we, uh, we conquered it, uh, divided and conquered um, for this round, but um, I love the, the Pioneer IPAs, especially when, the, you know, when it's something you guys really focus on and release for a winter beer, because usually you hear you know, the winter beers are like those winter warmers, stouts, those heavier type beers. So it's nice to, it's a refreshing alternative for uh, a wintry kind of beer. And I love the, I love the pine, uh, yeah. the, the spruce uh, notes. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Bert, well, your initial definitely. thoughts? <clears throat> sorry, I didn't want to cut them off. No, you can. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, my initial thoughts, I mean, so I definitely taste the pine and, and, you know, it really plays into that hot profile. Um, you know, that, you know, I get a, a definite uh, multi base um, with this as well. You know, when you, when you go for this type of IPA, you're not playing into the juicier side of things. Right. I mean, that's kind of the nature of the, like the piney flavor. Yep. Yeah. I'm definitely going for the pine flavor and you're definitely right on the malt base. We use a uh, Simpsons golden promise. It's kind of like a Simpsons version of uh, Maris Otter. So really nice, full body, really good malt, honestly. We do 50-50, so we do 50% Tura, 50% uh, Golden Promise, and I believe some Weirman Melanoidin we put in there too. So definitely a winter IPA. Like you mentioned, uh, kind of like a winter warmer. Nice, full, malty body with the pine notes. It's definitely perfect winter beer. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. You know, you I love that. You know, you're right. Winter warmers typically I lean towards that maltier flavor, but like with bringing in that pine um, to play along with the hops, it, it to me it's great. I think it's fantastic for all IPA lovers. I think uh, pretty much anyone would love this beer. You know, a, anyone if you know you love the the juicier IPAs or you just love your your hoppier IPAs, it's perfect. I think six point one percent too. It's not super heavy. Yeah, not super heavy. Yeah, we kind of try to keep most of our stuff um, 
within the drinkable range, I'd say mm -hmm. like 5%, 6%. We do like, we have the, uh, coffee stout today. That's 8%. And we do have our, uh, doubles, uh, walk in the clouds and King Rhino that are 8%, but most of our beers stay fairly low, low ABV. We call it the, uh, five beer rule. You can sit down at the bar and drink five of the same beer in the same sitting and still want another one then. Yeah. Kind of what we there do. There you go. <laughs> Five's a pretty high standard. That's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you can beer for a while, so. That's it. Maybe, maybe a, your normal uh, person would be a three beer rule, so. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is this one you think that's going to be recurring uh, during the holidays as well? Uh, yeah, so we brewed it last year, but it was our pilot series number mm -hmm. two or number five or something like that. Okay. Um, so we brought it back this year. And it was definitely well received. All the bartenders were asking about it if it was going to come back. So, you know, it's a pretty good sign. And uh, I think, yeah, this is going to be our winter, winter staple uh, going forward. Yeah, Very I love cool. that. Have you guys had past winter beers that you've come out with, or is this kind of your first year of really going, you know, going um, all out with some new releases here? So, this being our second year having the tap room open, uh, last year was kind of our kind of our trial run, I guess, for a lot of beers. Um, so that's really, I think this is really the only winter seasonal we kind of made permanent. We have our pumpkin beer and uh, Oktoberfest beer. Those are definitely the fall seasonals. Um, I'm trying to think, I don't think, oh yeah, we have our summer ale and uh, yeah, dry hop Mexican stout for the uh, summertime. Mm. And uh, it kind of seems like those are going to be our seasonal beers. Nice. Kind of moving forward. I don't know if we have any spring stuff yet that we've really hashed out. Not to yeah. get too sidetracked, but I feel like that spring seasonal kind of like doesn't have a niche flavor to it. I, I don't yeah. know if that's uh, something that's like a, an actual topic among brewers, but I mean, I feel like the other three seasons kind of have that distinguished taste and flavor i don't know if spring is uh just kind of a mystery i remember a few years ago saison saisons were a big yeah. uh, spring thing for a while everybody had a saison out so i don't think it ever really took though because i haven't really seen many saisons come out in the spring since then so yeah, yeah <clears throat> it doesn't so. seem to be as obvious like what the you know what the flavor of the season would be the other seasons it just seems so obvious. You mentioned was your not again not to get sidetracked, but did you mention a Mexican stout as one of your summer beers? Yeah, we brew a Mexican lager uh, in the summertime. Uh, we that use Mexican good. Mexican uh, lager yeast, and we dry hop it with El Dorado and Azaka. Nice. Love it. And that's definitely another one of those seasonal beers that everybody kind of waits for. It's definitely one of the favorites around here. Yes, I am very much so into those. So yeah. summertime. So you mentioned, you know, you, you mentioned you, you guys brewed this last year uh, as a pilot batch. Yep. Um, and, you know, you, you mentioned your Oktoberfest and your uh, pumpkin ale this year. You know, are you guys, do you feel like you're starting to get into that seasonal variety routine um, to add along with the staples? Um, is that kind of something that's going to be recurring from now on? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it definitely is. Nice. I love that. And one more fun random question. Is sure. Die Hard a Christmas movie? Oh my God. This is a fucking topic every year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to not gonna throw have, my opinion out on such a... Shouldn't have named it Spruce Rodney. Willis if you yeah. didn't want the questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it is, it's a movie in Christmas. It is not a Christmas movie. <laughs> there you yeah, go. It, who wants I, to convince me otherwise go for it but i wholeheartedly agree with you on that one i'm sticking to it yeah. <laughs> all right steve you want to move on to the next one yes here we have next up we have the uh the dark lager and i am not overly familiar with dark dark loggers i haven't had many of them um actually this weekend i in preparation for this i had a number of them yesterday <laughs> um but i'm trying yours for the first time today i want to make sure to try this um save it for the interview here and so I also want to point out really fast before you don't dive into this, you don't like Star Wars at all. So I'm wondering if you uh, really even appreciate the or Die Hard for that matter, based uh, off your last question. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm bad with movies. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, may the Schwartz be with you is actually a play on uh, Spaceballs. 
I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> well, all right, Steve. Get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, the Dark Lager. Tell us a little bit more about this. I mean, I'll give my initial impressions, but yeah, tell us. Uh, Tell us what goes into one of these bad boys and uh, yeah, how, how it came so to be. So we get so many requests from the owners to brew IPAs and pastry stouts and stuff that, you know, people are kind of looking for. So going into this season, we're like, can we please brew like a Schwartz beer or something like that we want to brew? So the owners were like, yeah, yeah, you can brew a Schwartz beer, fine. This year, fault it doesn't sell, that <laughs> type of thing. So, so how's yeah, it going so, so far? <laughs> well, it seems to be going pretty good. Cool. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, sports beer, uh, dark lager, dark German lager. It's not supposed to be overly roasty or chocolatey. Kind of just had enough uh, dark malt to kind of give the color and a little yeah. bit of roasty flavor. Um, but lower, a little bit lower alcohol, definitely than your you know, winter stouts would normally be. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's supposed to be smooth, uh, somewhat full body. Um, they have to lower alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's almost, I, my first impression of it and uh, similar beers was just that it's like a, it's a lighter, smoother, you know, quicker drink than, you know, yes. version of a stout essentially. Um, I'm sure there's tons of differences between, you know, what goes into making the different styles, but that was, that was my first impression. If you like stouts and don't necessarily want a heavy hitter, this seems like a really good option to have, you know, you know more of a session stout. I don't know if that's a thing, but that's kind of my <laughs> first impression. Yeah, it's definitely a thing. Um, yeah, no, you're totally right. Um, it's supposed to be kind of like your dark alternative to a, uh, to a stout or a porter. Um, yeah. That yeah, definitely drinkable, more drinkable than your normal stout, like you said. Yeah. Similar and is this like tasting notes uh, along those lines? Yeah, a little chocolatey. Yeah, definitely chocolatey. Sure. Use a little chocolate malt. Let me use a Wireman Carafa Three Special, and the Carafa Three Special is dehusked, so it's uh, de bittered. It's kind of like a bitterless okay. malt, so you don't get that like overly roasty bitter malt flavor you'd get from like a roasted barley. Or something along those lines. Definitely cleaner, smoother, dark malt. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So, is one is, had you made a Schwartz beer before yourself? It sounds like at Old Planners you hadn't. But was this something you had been like waiting to do, and you knew what you were doing going in, or did you have to like figure it out a little bit as you were going? Uh, this was definitely one of those kind of had to figure out uh, as we were going along. Uh, yeah. I'd never brewed a Schwartz beer before. Well, it's definitely one of those styles I've, I've always kind of wanted, excuse me, to try. And I think it came out pretty good. We're yeah. definitely happy with it. We don't have a pilot system here, so a uh, pilot batch for us is five barrels. So Yeah. <laughs> definitely a little nerve-wracking sometimes, but yeah, nothing's been, nothing's killed anybody yet, so. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's all or nothing. You just, yeah. you really got to go for it. I thought it adds yeah, a little exactly. bit of a thrill to it. I like it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and totally. then hang on, hang on to it until it sells. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah that's, that's thrilling behind the scenes. I think that's awesome. That's great. Well, yeah, another good one here. Um, I'll be curious to see. I think it'll be really interesting. And obviously, like you're saying, you guys will definitely be interested to see how coming out with these, you know, these different winter beers you have. I'll be, I'll be curious to watch and see what takes and what comes back um, and, you know, ends up being one of your regular seasonals. I think that's so interesting to see how the general public takes to it. Yeah. yeah. And, and not to like totally belabor that point of like the seasonals, but, you know, do you see like for a dark lager, uh, do you see that maybe being a staple potentially in a year round lineup? Um, it's kind of hard. That's yeah. It's kind of hard to tell now. We just canned it a week ago. So, we're going to have to kind oh, yeah. of see. <laughs> Very fresh. All right. Yeah. Does. Yeah. Love we'll it. see how it does and then kind of play it by that, play it by, play it by year from there. Um, but dark lager, I don't know if I'd say that's definitely a staple type of thing. Um, but yeah, like I said, we'll see. The spruce, definitely, that's going to be a staple every year. Um, but I think in the wintertime, definitely brew some kind of dark beer. You definitely have to brew some sort of stout or 
Porter or something to kind of go along with that season. Yeah. So it kind of fills that gap. Yeah. Not yet. Well, we will transition into the uh, cold brew coffee stout in just a second. Uh, I do also have in my fridge from my trip the other day, the peanut, the chocolate peanut butter stout, you know, and that's something that you guys I'm sure have been putting out for a while now. Yeah. That's our second batch of the peanut butter. Um, it's kind of weird how peanut butter stouts kind of became one of those things that every brewery kind of has to take a swing at. It's kind of like pumpkin beer. I mean, I feel like a yeah. lot of places now are like, I, I don't think anyone ever envisioned wanting to get into like the peanut butter stout game, but yeah. here we are. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely uh, not my favorite style to brew, but <laughs> I think it came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. It's delicious. Yeah, I really enjoy it. But uh, yeah, I mean, just going back to the dark lager one more time um, before we, you know, transition over to the other stout. Um, you know, yeah, it, it just seems like that kind of beer that it has the characteristics that you can drink it in the summer when it's warm outside. You can drink it when it's cold outside. It kind of spans that whole like spectrum of, of the the flavor profile and the myths like those those what people like determine like what season you can drink a beer in. It seems like it yeah. spans across that whole realm. I definitely agree. Yep. Yeah. It could easily be a fall beer, it could easily be a winter beer. And you could easily drink it in the summertime. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say if you're like a hardcore like you love stouts and you're dying for one in the summer, but you don't really want to like yeah. knock yourself out with a, yeah. <laughs> a you know regular stout, go for this go for one of these guys and you yeah. know take it a little easier and mow the lawn then drink a ten percent stout. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not into that. We actually if I remember one of these interviews we did, we had somebody who was just like, Oh yeah, they went on this like miles long bike ride in the summer when, you know, they came back to the interview with us and they were crushing a stout or something. It was like, oh, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> Not for me. They should have got to be with the dark log. Yeah. Got to be a special type of person. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll jump into uh, this last one that we got here. So this is the 50,000 volts cold brew coffee stout. And I mentioned before, you guys have uh, at least one other stout that you're rolling out right now with the chocolate peanut butter. You know, why uh, the cold brew coffee stout that you're getting into right now? And like, where did that develop? Um, so we have a great uh, coffee uh, bakery uh, uh, stored right down the street from us, Crave. Crave, yeah. And they make some awesome coffee, awesome breakfast sandwiches. So we've had a pretty good relationship with them for ever since we've opened. Um, and yeah, cold brew coffee stouts kind of a, have been a thing for a while. So it's just kind of natural to go to them and ask them if they wanted to brew some cold brew for us and, and take a whiff at a, at a coffee stout. And this is our second batch of this. And I think it's come out good. I'm definitely very happy with it. And I think the, Crave guys are pretty happy with it, um, so yeah, everybody's happy. This is uh, these are my first few sips. It is wildly smooth yeah. and not super thick. Um, I and I don't know. I'm gonna leave this up to you to to answer. Uh, is there something about working with cold brew coffee versus just regular beans or regular coffee that makes it uh, more flavorful, smoother to drink, and maybe even a little bit lighter body? So, yeah, you have to use cold brew uh, pretty much if you're going to brew a beer. Um, Got it. Okay. Uh, you get all the aromatics, and you don't get any of that bitterness to it. If you use hot brewed coffee, it would get like that stale coffee flavor after a couple days. And it's actually uh, fairly volatile, so uh, the coffee flavor will actually go away after a couple months. Um, it'll, yeah, be completely gone out of the beer. So it's definitely a young uh, beer drinker, kind of like you drink your IPAs young, your coffee stouts, you're definitely supposed to drink young too. Right. Um, and a cold brew, yeah, all aromatics, no bitterness. Uh, it's awesome stuff. It's, it's so smooth. I mean, it just goes down so easy when you're drinking it. And it is yeah. wildly flavorful. <laughs> yeah, definitely um, not too heavy. Uh, we did kind of like the same method we did with Kind of like the dark lager, uh, a lot of deep bittered uh, malt, not a lot of roasted barley, meant to be smooth, a uh, little sweet, uh, definitely easy drinking, and kind of let the coffee kind of shine through the most. 
I, I don't think this is going to pass your rule of five at nine and a half percent. No, <laughs> I would not recommend drinking uh, five of these. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's it definitely. You guys certainly pumped up the uh, the ABV on this one. Yeah, we definitely wanted to do something that was a little bit out of our wheelhouse. Um, That's cool. And that was kind of out of our comfort zone. So yeah, we wanted to do the imperial stout kind of thing and throw the ABV up there to around ten percent. Steve, nice. I, I I know you're not uh, super big on the the stouts, um, but as a coffee drinker, I think you would probably really enjoy this one. I drink plenty of coffee. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm willing to give any beer a try, but um, yeah, I'll have to uh, have to get in there for one of those too. Now, I I, I don't know, Brandon, if you have any more specific questions to this one, but I have an important question about all four of these beers um, for Ben. Um, if you had to choose among these four new creations that you've been heavily involved in, which one is your favorite? I'd say the spruce. Um, yeah. Beyond the spruce tips. Yeah. The spruce. Nice. I, that one I need to get because I know that I like those kinds of beers. So <laughs> stout's a little more out there for me, uh, you know, as far as my yeah. preferences go, but the, the spruce... Yeah. Is there a uh, is there a time frame for the Spruce IPA? You know when you guys you think you're going to stop brewing that one for the season? Uh, we we're definitely only doing the one batch of it, um, so it should be sold out by January or within mm. January. So that's good information. Before February. So if you want to get your hands on it, definitely buy it soon. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, so before we uh, before we get you out of here and, and let you go, you know. Uh, what, uh, what are we, what can we expect from old planners for the winter? I know we're kind of diving into a realm of, you know, trying to dodge or just work around COVID restrictions. Um, the, the cold season, you know, you guys had the tent set up out front, uh, at your tap room all summer, all fall, you know, what's, uh, what's the next step for old planters? Um, and so how, so people are able to get your beer. Um, so yeah, we took the tent down, uh, because of the snowstorm. If you let more than a couple inches of snow get on the tent, it'll collapse. So our outdoor seating is done for the winter time, and we're not going to be doing any indoor seating. So if you're only doing tap room sales. You can come into the tap room uh, Friday through Sunday and pick up beer. We are also doing uh, beer deliveries, I believe, as far as Lynn, uh, as far south as Lynn, and as far north as Hamilton, I believe. Um, we're also mailing beer, too. So you can go on the old planners website and fill out a form and we'll mail you beer. Uh, you can find out all the details on our Facebook page, well, old planners brewing company and also our Instagram page. And I believe the website is just oldplanners.com. So uh, before I, I'm sorry to keep, you know, jumping in with more questions for you. Uh, <laughs> if you had to pick not just these four beers, uh, you know, what's something that you really enjoy brewing uh, from all of the old planners beers that you guys have rolled out? Um, I'd say, oh man, probably my most. I know, really putting you on the spot. We all, there's always <laughs> challenging question. We ask yeah. everybody this one. No, yeah, no worries. Yeah. My most consumed <laughs> beer here probably be, be um, it might be OPP. The old planners pills. Yeah, that's my number. That's my favorite from you guys. I love that. There you go, Steve. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm, Steve definitely so a, I'm definitely a pilsner drinker. Same. Uh, you know, I love Notch and Salem. Have yep. them right there. Like stop yep. by for leaders all the time. Um, it definitely. I think there's a lot of hop fatigue in the beer community. People get kind of sick of IPAs and stuff. So I'm definitely a pilsner fan myself. Like love I said, a beer rule. So. Definitely, Pilsner is a good candidate for a five beer. That's five plus. That's five plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. I had, that was the that was the additional beer that I got this weekend uh, prior yeah. to this interview, and uh, yeah. I did I did four beer rule on my own. Nice. That's all. So I yeah, had, so. so we brewed <laughs> that, and we didn't get the yeast we wanted to at first, um, but we put it out and we were brewing it for the tap room, and people were trying it, and the reviews were coming in pretty pretty good the owners were like don't change a freaking thing about it nice <laughs> so it kind of just stuck with that recipe from that's there. awesome that's, that's melon right there. really nice yeah. fruity, delicate yeah good stuff yeah. that's gonna be as a brewer so i have no idea because i've 
home brewed once and it didn't go well and it didn't taste good. But as a brewer, it must be great when you hear that you brewed something um, and it just came out perfect. The owners say it's don't change a thing. And you know, you got people coming in, giving all the good feedback. So that was, that was right. a nice feeling as a brewer. <laughs> Definitely. hundred yeah, percent. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cool. All right. Well, John, thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight. We really appreciate it. We love chatting with you and taking uh, sips of each of these brews. Um, four new awesome brews from Old Planners um, and the collaboration with Wandering Soul as well. Uh, before we get you out of here, um, you know, you mentioned oldplanners.com. Is there anywhere else people can go to find or pick up these brews that are outside of the tap room? Um, and where can we get you on social media? Um, so I know uh, in Beverly, uh, definitely uh, Depot Liquors, uh, one-stop market. Um, I believe Cosgrove in Salem has our beer. Um, but we definitely do most of our sales out of the tap room. Yeah. And you can find us on Instagram and Facebook and at the website, oldplanners.com. There you go. Oldplanners.com. Check it out. Find them on social media. Give Old Planters a follow. Uh, fantastic beer. You know, if you get a chance, you're in the area in Beverly or around the area, pick up any of these four that we talked about tonight, plus any of the other ones that they brew and can. They're all fantastic. So check us out uh, at beersighted.com for more of our content. You can find us on YouTube at Beersighted as well. We're on social media, at Beer Sighted Pod on Instagram and at Beer Sighted Media everywhere else. Really appreciate it, John. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight. Cheers. Cheers, my Cheers. pleasure.